Yeah, good day, it's Charlie ZL2 CTM. Hey, I just wanted to do a, a short video today just to provide a bit of an update on how the software is going. Uh, I mentioned yesterday that I was going to initially play around with some code to measure the frequency of the audio coming in and then basically um, converting that to our desired RF frequency and have that drive the uh, SI5351. Um, that's working really well. What I, I, uh, I was playing around with some initial code using a, an interrupt that would look at the number of uh, cycles in, in a set duration of time. Um, that wasn't too bad actually and got it down to, uh, it seemed to be roughly about a hertz um, accuracy which um, I wasn't overly happy with. So what I elected to do is have a play around with Paul Stoffrigan's um, frequency measure library which uh, I must admit works really well. Um, I've tweaked that slightly um, and, and for this particular application, it's, it's like I say, it's working very well. So what I want to do today is just to um, have a quick look at what the hardware setup is, um, which is pretty simple. Um, look at the code, and then um, just a quick end-to-end -end demo of this laptop transmitting FT8, um, and I'll show a little bit of whisper too, but certainly FT8, um, through, through the, uh, the transceiver here, um, being picked up on the, the base radio, and then being decoded here on um, on that particular computer. So, in terms of the the hardware, um, that particular library wants to see the audio uh, coming in on D8, which is exactly what I've done. Um, he didn't talk about it, but what I've uh, decided to do is have that pin um, sitting at two and a half volts, uh, and then to have the audio overlaid on top of that. Uh, and I did that by using two 10k ohm resistors, which you can just see there. Uh, one between D8 and Earth, and one between D8 and 5 volts, and through that voltage divider, which sets that at, uh, at uh, 2.5 volts. And then the audio riding on top of that through uh, a DC uh, coupling capacitor, we'll say again, an AC coupling capacitor, DC blocking capacitor of about 220 uh, microfarads. Um, sitting on the, IT, on the IT, uh, I2C bus, so um, A4 and A5, uh, is the SI5351. And as you can just see there, I've got a, um, a simple piece of wire just hanging off our clock zero, which is just providing enough RF coupling between this uh, and the radio without going outside the house. Uh, and I've got that set on 2 milliamps just to, to keep the drive right down. And that little USB sound card uh, is working well. And as I mentioned yesterday, um, I've just soldered directly onto the pads um, the audio coming out of here for the, for the um, to be measured. Now, what I've also got, and I'll show that in code, is a software Vox. Um, I thought I'd have a bit of a play around with that, and it's and it's working really well actually. So I think I might stick with that all the way through. So rather than detecting that audio, um, let's say from a voltage point of view, then providing a discrete to the nano saying um, transmits over, that's all now done in software, uh, which which like I say works very well. So what I want to do now is just quickly go through the code. Um, and then we will arc up that um, end to end uh, check to see what's going on. So, hopefully, that should be relatively clear over here. Let me just zoom up a little bit. Hopefully, some of those artifacts disappear. So, I won't go through every line of code, but just through the highlights, I guess. Um, what, what is happening in, in the main loop, which I'll get to in a sec, there is a, uh, it's looping around and around and around, and it's basically waiting for Paul's library to, as we can see up here, Paul's library to uh, be ready to provide um, frequency information. Uh, and then I've set it to count or to add that information 60 times, and then divide it by 60 to provide the overall um, frequency to, to, to increase the accuracy a bit. Um, sitting outside of that, uh, is some code which is looking to see if we are still transmitting or not um, and then if we're no longer transmitting uh, it then sets the SI5351 um, output to zero. So that's a sort of big hands, that's what's going on here. Um, I won't go into all the variables but the transmit heartbeat is the one I just mentioned so uh, if that remains at zero for one second uh, the SI5351 gets turned off if that's still kept at one, and it's kept at one every time um, there's data available on the audio frequency, um, it remains on, so to speak, i.e. we're still transmitting. 
uh, won't go into too much in terms of the setup. I just mentioned before that I'm uh, looking on uh, clock zero on the SI5351 and just driving at two milliamps just to keep the um, that little power level nice and low. So, in terms of the main loop here, um, I've got a Vox timer. So what I'm doing with that Vox timer is every 100 milliseconds, which we'll see down here, I'm checking to see if that uh, transmit heartbeat is either at one or at zero. Um, and if it's at zero, which we'll see in a sec, um, it counts it up. And if it gets to count 10, in other words, one second, uh, it then goes back to uh, back to off, i.e. no longer transmitting. Anyway, but here goes um, Paul's uh, library here with data coming in. Um, straight away, if there is data, I set that um, heartbeat to 1. In other words, hey, don't go to receive, we're still on transmit. And I reset that counter back to 0. Um, so, it's no, oops, it? so it's no longer counting up to, uh, up to 10. Um, summation there, so like I say, it's counting up um, 60 counts. And then that's the overall um, frequency data. So it's just, um, like I say, counting up 60 times, dividing by 60, divided a, uh, a more accurate frequency reading. And as you can see here, so once we are ready to uh, transmit that particular tone that's coming through from the, the computer, uh, we turn on for a start the SI5351, so enable clock zero to one, so we now turn it on, and we set its frequency to that audio frequency plus our desired RF frequency and put that out at clock zero. For test purposes, what I'm doing here, um, which we'll see in a sec, is I've just selected 14.082 up in the 20 meter band. Um, just sticking, it's just a, it was just a clear frequency that we can hear it nice and clearly as opposed to uh, trying to pick out the test tone here uh, on top of the actual FT8 signals. Um, what that, that particular number there will be replaced with a variable that will um, that will vary depending on the mode and band. So uh, if it's going to be for FT8 on say uh, 20 meters, then that variable will be set to 14074. Um, but for just for test purposes, like I say, it's just a number I put in there just for, for demonstration and for testing. Um, next one down is uh, that test that I'm doing every 100 milliseconds just to make sure and to see if that heartbeat has been set to zero. It gets set to zero every time the main loop goes through at the very bottom here. I set it to zero and then if it's still transmitting straight away uh, up here it gets set back to one. But if this if this is no longer receiving frequency information i.e. the computer is no longer sending audio to the radio um, this will remain at zero and this will increment up to 10 and when it does as we can see here the SI5351 output gets set to zero in other words turned off uh, and that's it so that's at the moment that's the code and really apart from the uh, display and having the actual transmit frequency vary by mode and band there's not a lot more that's going to be added to this so it's going to be from a, um, a software point of view um, pretty simple. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to turn up the main radio's uh, audio, which hopefully won't be too annoying, and we'll just set the, from an end-to-end -end point of view, we'll set this FT8 over here to transmit, to enable, and we're currently on receive, so once that toggles through on the next cycle, uh, we will start to transmit. And I'll just keep the volume turned up so we can hear that. So coming through, and and we're off. So let me just turn that up and you'll be able to hear the tone. You can see it's coming through here. And as we can see, we've just now got a, um, a good decode. We've gone back to receive, i.e. that um, tone has disappeared um, because the code over here has decided that there's nothing coming through. It's counted up to 10 and uh, it's turned off. Very shortly, we'll be coming through back on the next cycle. And off we go again. So that's working just fine. What I'll do is I'll just turn off uh, the enable transmit, which then will allow me to change modes. Okay, I've elected to do a, uh, a whisper transmission. This one started at 3.42, and uh, 
basically 90 seconds into 120 seconds. Got the RF gain crank right down on the radio, and we'll just see what comes through on a decode in a sec. Uh, quite a bit more stringent this one here with the frequency variations being 1.46 odd hertz uh, changing every 680 odd milliseconds so uh, the software is working well to keep uh, track of those variations and to transpose them up to our transmit frequency there we go we're going to see if that decodes and there we are there so 342 so 342 um, 0 dB, so like I say, that one down. Oh, sorry, 37 dBm. But that's good. So that's um, so that's both FT8 and Whisper. Uh, no reason why JS8 wouldn't work. So I think at this stage of the game, I'm going to continue on with the uh, development. I think I'm now going to add in to, from a hardware point of view, the little OLED display uh, and the mode change button, get that up and running. Um, but other than that, there's, there's going to be very little code from here. And then, as I said, mentioned before, that variable there, which is our transmit frequency, will be set um, by the, um, the mode and band. Anyway, I will say 73 here and continue playing, and uh, we shall see you next time. Cheers all.